my name is Anna Adifisoyi and I've dedicated this channel into uh, researching how to design your interiors and your home to bring Jesus and a loving atmosphere into the house. So um, I'll be talking about different topics, you know, what colours do I choose, what furniture, and we want to produce the maximum amount of peace and calmness and um, love in the home. So today um, I want to talk about right from the beginning, from the basics, and that is talking about nature, because essentially as we design our houses, um, we, the, the nature is our resource. Um, the, the, your house is made of bricks, it's made of wood. Um, we've chosen colors which are inspired by nature. So nature is basically where we have got all our inspiration from to design our homes. So um, to kick, kick off and to kick start this thing, I just want to use this as an encouragement for you to spend more time in nature. So this is a Christian channel. Um, I'm coming very much from a Christian background. Um, nature definitely does have a very, very positive effect on our well-being, on our physical well-being and our, on our social, psychological well-being. So whether one is a Christian or not, nature just does have a very, very positive effect. Um, I've studied design for a for quite a number of years at university. I just completed a master's at the University of the Arts in London. And um, my master's was in um, bringing Christian values into the home and into the choice of your design and into the choice of your, your, your decor. Um, so anyway, to start off, I read a book called The Nature Fix, which is this one here. And it's written by a lady called Florence Williams. Um, she's not a Christian, but she researches very, very well the positive effect that nature has on our well-being, on our psychology, and on our on our on our fit on our you know on our bodies, and um, I just want to read a few quotes which are really quite interesting from the book. Um, one is nature definitely makes us feel happier, healthier, more creative, and more empathetic. So this is really an encouragement. You know, if you the last time you went to a park was like weeks ago. I just want to encourage you to get out there and to get into nature and to just um, just enjoy what God has created. Um, and then what is a little bit frightening as well is that we spend up to seven hours a day on screens. That is half the time outdoors as our parents did. So our generation is definitely too much on the screens and too much indoors. We need to get outside. And children who spend little or no time outdoors that results in physical and mental problems. So she's researched this really, really well. There definitely is a very positive effect of nature that nature has on us. And there's definitely a trend towards us, like going outside, going outdoors less and less, which is very negative. So this is a, a video to just encourage you to go outdoors. And from a Christian point of view, why would you want to do that? Well, nature is... God created nature as an atmosphere where he communicates to us. Now, it's very, very important that as a Christian, you don't worship nature. If you read Romans chapter one, it's very clear what God does to people who worship nature. He doesn't like it at all. But as a Christian, you, you're going out into nature and you are just enjoying the atmosphere that he has created in nature. Now, this is been this is very interestingly been scientifically proven that nature does something positive to us and researchers have kind of recently discovered the reason um this that is in the book as well it says nature's power lies in its geometric fractal patterns or its particular sound vibrations now this is really interesting so the the, the power in nature lies in its is sound vibrations. So something is going on in nature that's producing sound vibrations. And um, if you research sound a little bit, I had to research it, you know, um, from like a, sort of in the children's section to make it really easy. But sound is created when something vibrates and sends waves of energy to our ears. So something, something vibrates and it sends, sends waves of energy to our ears. And um, now this is another interesting fact. All objects have a natural frequency and everything, it says here, everything in the universe can and does vibrate. And they're all doing it for the same reason, to store energy by shifting it between different forms. So everything in the universe vibrates. So there's something, if, if there's a sound, there's, there, there are vibrations going on in nature 
um, that perhaps our physical ear, they can't hear everything, but there's something going on there that is doing something very positive to us with the sound waves. And if we look in the Psalms, you know, David said it very, very clearly. David said in Psalm 65, 13, the meadows are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy and sing together. So he's saying that meadows are singing and valleys are, you know, um, flocks are singing and they all shout together for joy. They're, they're, they're making some kind of um, symphony or some kind of, kind of, you know, noise where they're praising God. And the next one is, in Psalm 96, verse 12, it says, Let the field be exultant and all that is in it. Then shall all the trees of the woods sing for joy. So he's saying that trees even sing for joy. I believe that, yes, they are singing, only perhaps our, our physical ears, they can't hear it. But in subconsciously, we are picking something up. We're picking something up in nature. We're, 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 we're picking up these vibrations. And that is why nature is, is so so good for us. There's no doubt about it. And Jesus even said the same thing. You know, when the disciples were, were praising him, um, this is taken from Luke 19, verse 37 to 40. So Luke 19, 37 to 40, as he was approaching the city at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God, um, exalting him loudly for all the mighty miracles and works of power that they had witnessed, crying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And some of the Pharisees from the throng said to Jesus, teacher, reprove your disciples. He replied, I tell you that if these keep silence, the very stones will cry out. Now this is really interesting. So Jesus said, look, if people are gonna keep quiet, the stones are gonna cry out. So, you know, we as Bible-based Christians, we believe the, the Bible literally, that stones will cry out. There's something that's gonna happen with the stone that will praise God, that, it, you know, it, just because we can't hear it doesn't mean that it's not happening. So that's what Jesus said. So this is really interesting. And then the other part where these scientists say what is good for us is in the is in geometric fractal patterns. Now, this is actually easier than it sounds. A, ge a, a fractal pattern is basically you have a branch and then you have a smaller branch branching off. Um, so it's it's the same of, 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 of the original, but except smaller. And um, people are now who are researching the Bible, they are, um, they're saying more and more that um, but the Bible possibly contains a lot of fractal patterns with the ancient Hebrew and the gematria. So that's getting quite complex. But, um, we, you know, God uses fractal patterns all over nature. You know, they are in coastlines, they're in and they're sort of they can be very complex mathematical um, combinations. You know, the, the branch is probably the easiest um, thing to demonstrate it by. Um, I just wanted to find, um, I mean, th this is just an easy explanation. It says the mathematical key to nature's fractals is the concept of self-similarity. Recall that a shape is self-similar if it is made up from smaller copies of itself. So you have a, a, a branch and then you have a little branch coming off that and it's a smaller copy of the original of the branch itself. And we see these kind of patterns in the Bible. Like, for example, um, you know, people sort of say that the stories of Moses and Joseph and Jesus, they're all they're fractals. You know, you have Moses leaving his state of wealth of, of, uh, in the in the palace. He left his palace place and he went into the wilderness and then he brought the Israelites um, out of slavery through the wilderness and brought them into their freedom. And um, you have the same with Jesus Christ. You know, he was in heaven. He came down on earth. He humbled himself and then um, brought us um, through the wilderness into life. And then you have the same sort of pattern with Joseph. You know, Joseph was... Uh, despised well he was loved by his father first of all but then he was despised by his brothers sold into slavery and then uh, from 17 to the age of 30 from the age 17 to 30 he was in 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 prison and then at age 30 he was made governor over Egypt and he was able to set people free from starvation by being a governor so you can see a pattern there um, of of and and there's more you know that even David is considered as a kind of uh, um, form of the Messiah, if you look at the Amplified 
Bible translation, it does say that David is kind of like a Messiah. So he's, he's like a forerunner of the Messiah, just as Moses and, and Joseph were. So they, these are fractal patterns that we see in the Bible. And um, people are researching this more and more in Bible codes as well, that there are some kind of um, mathematical patterns. So anyway, fractal patterns, they're used all over nature. And um, they must have a very, very, they have a positive effect on us physically and uh, psychologically as well. So all this is proven. Anyway, this is just, you know, a starter that um, next time I want to be talking about how to bring nature into your home. Um, but this is a starter just to, um, you know, I just want to motivate everybody out there just to get out there. If you don't have time to go for a walk, just, just stop at a tree and praise God at how beautiful he has made the creation. You're not worshipping creation, you're worshipping the creator and thanking God for it. Or from that flower that you might see. And, um, and I pray that this will also connect you to God, bring you closer to God. And, um, you know, nature, it's, it's supposed to create an environment that draws us closer to God. We're not supposed to worship it, but it is something that God has created to communicate his values, to communicate to us. And, and that is supposed to bring us, draw us nearer to him. Amen.